Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About House. I'm Todd. I'm Juana. Okay, we are going to talk about 10 things uh, in a house that if they have them, you should not buy the house. Okay. Or you should think very carefully about buying the house. Okay. These are like the 10 warning signs. Okay. Okay, this is one of those, one of those videos we're going to do. Okay, if you're a buyer, mm -hmm. if you're getting ready to buy, this is a great video for you. If you think about buying in the future, this is a great video for you. If you've already bought a house, this is also a great video. And if you're a seller, these are the things that maybe you need to take care of so that your house is more sellable. Okay, number one, Wanna foundation cracks. Why are they a big deal? Ooh, those are a big deal because they're hard to fix. They're expensive to fix. Uh, you might not be able to get financing uh, with foundation cracks. Uh, and look, let's face it, most houses don't have foundation cracks, so move on. You can find one without them. Right. There we go. Next one. Not a problem probably in Vegas, but maybe in the Northeast. Outdated electrical. You know, to me, um, it's not just the Northeast. It's, it's almost anywhere where you've got an older property. Okay. Uh, and an older property, you know, is probably anything over 40 years old is going to have really outdated electrical. Uh, even... Properties that are maybe 25 or 30 years old could have some outdated electrical going on. And so you do want somebody to take a look at all that and make sure that the house is safe. The electrical um, codes have changed over the years. So, for example, things that were not required to be in conduit are now required to be in conduit. Uh, that's a, a fire safety issue. So there are all kinds of things like that. Uh, for example, um, you know, a lot of homes... Uh, are required to have the ground fault interrupters. That's uh, not every home has them. Uh, and then as far as electrical outlets outside, those need to be a, a, of a special type as well. They need to be covered and all kinds of things like that. So particularly, I would say anything that's 40 years or older absolutely is going to have issues unless it's been uh, brought up to code. Anything that's 25 years plus should be looked at very carefully. Okay. Water stains. Ooh, water stains. So water stains are kind of exciting, right? Um, we don't want to use the M word, mold. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, those. it's just discoloration until it's not. So you do want it to, to be looked at to make sure that there's nothing going on in there that's going to make you and your family sick. You also want to make sure that whatever uh, has caused that discoloration has is no longer um, an issue that has been it has been remedied and that could be for a lot of reasons it could be from a roof leak it could be from a plumbing leak all kinds of things a lot of times there are pipes in the walls and people put up pictures uh, and they uh, maybe puncture that just a little bit and but that's not where the, the discoloration shows up it shows up elsewhere because that's where the water pools so it, it takes sometimes a while to figure out where that came from okay which goes with the next one, a moldy smell. Mm -hmm. So if you smell a moist, you know, if you smell moisture, if you smell mold, if you smell anything funky, absolutely get it looked at. Make sure that you know where that's coming from and that you have a remedy for it that is uh, both safe and effective. And of course, that is not going to cost you an arm and a leg. If you are a seller, that's something you should probably take care of because you're living there uh, and you don't want to be in an unhealthy environment either. Lots of houses for sale in the neighborhood. Yes. So uh, competition can be really good, right? Uh, so if there are lots of homes for sale in the neighborhood, what's going on? Is it that it's just that time when the neighborhood's turning over or is something going on in the neighborhood? Uh, so sometimes you need to kind of dig a little, bit, a little bit deeper and find out what's going on in the neighborhood. You know, have, um, has it been rezoned for a different school? Uh, has there been something else going on that might not be something that you want to get involved in. So figure that out so that you can understand what it is that you're purchasing. Yeah, crime rate could just all of a sudden shot up in that part of town and sure. people are like, hey, let's get out of here. Mm -hmm. um, all the windows are fogged up. Ooh, that's expensive because windows are expensive. So the seals in windows uh, do tend to fail over time uh, and that can be remedied, but it, it is expensive. So you do want to make sure that if you do have such a house uh, that you're considering to purchase, you get a glass person out there to give you some estimates for what it's going to cost to remedy that problem. If you are a seller, um, it just doesn't look good. Get it fixed, okay? Because your home will show much better without your windows being fogged up. Um, obvious signs that the exterior of the home has not been maintained. Yeah, you know, I have, um, I've been with clients where we pull up to the house and they go, you know what, keep on driving. We don't even get out of the car 
because when we pull up, you know, the house just does not have that curb appeal, right? Maybe uh, there are dead, uh, there's dead landscaping, maybe there's uh, peeling paint, all kinds of things. So you want to make sure that that house looks like it's been cared for because this is a case where um, the cover of the book tells you something about the inside of the book, right? Because if the exterior of the house is not well maintained, the interior is probably neglected as well, and then you're dealing with all kinds of problems. Noticeable pests or insects? Icky. I do not like bugs. Uh, so yeah, bugs, uh, not, not a good situation. Not only is it not, is it kind of creepy crawly for people like me, but it also can be expensive and difficult to get rid of pests. Um, I was speaking with somebody last week and he was telling me that he purchased a home that was infested by um, scorpions. And that oh he, my God. Yeah. And it took years to get rid of these buggers. Uh, he said that, you know, he had every guy in town out and, and tried all kinds of things. And it took a long time to get rid of the scorpions. I had an REO house, bank owned home. I was doing my weekend inspections. It was over in like 89108. It was a crappy little house. It was in an old dumpy neighborhood. I hate, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I like parked, I rented, I just had to get some pictures to make sure whatever was going on with the house, the house was fine. So, and I, I walk in the house and I walk into, it's like linoleum floor. It's really nasty. It was an older home. And I walk in there and I see something moving and I look down and everywhere, roaches, yes. cockroaches. All, and I mean, they were all over the place. I was like, holy cow. And I freaked out. And I just got, I just left. I was like, I'm done. I'm not going back in there. I think I actually called the office that we need to have a pest guy go over and like kill all the bugs. It yeah. was, in, I mean, there were dozens of cockroaches. They were all over the place. Yeah. I mean, I, I back in the area days, I, I walked into one, into a house where it just, the whole floor was moving. Yeah. It, it might've been the same one. It was, ew. it might've been, yeah, it might've been the same house. It was pretty bad. Okay. Um, you have fresh paint, but only on one wall. Yeah. You know, paint's not that expensive guys. Um, paint, paint the whole room, uh, preferably a neutral color. Now I know that purple is a really hot color. Uh, and I know that, um, fluorescent green is very attractive, but not to everyone. So let's consider painting those rooms, something neutral. If you're the seller, you're moving, don't worry about it, just paint something neutral so the buyers can look at the house uh, and not be distracted by paint colors. What about that they're trying to cover something up so they just painted that wall? Like it was discolored, so they just painted it. And that, but just one wall. Right, and that can happen too. You know, sometimes we paint a wall because we had uh, an artistic person in the house, particularly persons of smaller stature that tend to take crayons to walls. So sometimes we do that, okay. but sometimes there are more, um, oh, uh, more serious reasons why we paint walls and uh, people are trying to hide something. Okay. Standing water in the yard. Oh, that's an interesting one. So, um, you know, that can be an indication of all kinds of things, anything from something minor, like maybe irrigation problem to maybe a septic tank that's not doing well. Uh, ooh. So, um, so definitely take, take a look at that, have, uh, have a professional evaluate it and give you some ideas of what's going on and how to remedy it. If you are the seller, take care of that, please. Uh, nobody wants um, a septic tank that doesn't work well, and nobody wants to hear squish under their feet. <laughs> we highly recommend a home inspection. Yes. Go get a home inspector, have them go through the home and look at everything. They, it's, it's, remember, it's just a visual inspection. They're not going to go inside the walls and look for stuff going on in there. They can they only look at what they can see. So, and they're going to check for, they're going to test stuff like the AC, like how cool, cool does it get or how warm does the heater get? They'll be able to find some things probably. They're pretty good about everything. Like they'll be able to turn the pool equipment on, see if it's leaking anywhere, see if it's like, if it's pumping it with, with enough force and all that. Um, and they'll save you some headaches because while sellers in probably every state are required to disclose known defects, mm -hmm. we have seen cases specifically where somebody's had some major thing done, like a massive roof repair and stuff, and they've been in the house over 20 years, and they're like, 
it wasn't done while I was here and I didn't, this is the first I've heard about it because they didn't realize that all this work had been done and the previous owner never told them. And all of a sudden this is discovered like, Hey, what the hell happened here? Like, I don't know. I've been in the house 20 years and that we didn't do that. Right. So there are, so you do want a home inspector. So let me give you an example. Um, sometimes uh, people do aftermarket things, the house, right? So for example, uh, maybe they have an air conditioner installed in the garage. Well, what happens when you do that, especially if it's on the roof, now you have intrusion into the garage. Uh, and then is there a firewall break now between the garage and the house? So that could be a very serious thing. So you do want to have a home inspector take a look at things like that. There are all kinds of good reasons. And, you know, make sure that you interview the home inspector before he or she comes out and find out what, what the scope of their inspection is and what you can expect. So some home, home inspectors will bring uh, thermal imaging with them so that they can check to see if there's maybe water going on behind the walls or something like that. Some will bring drones with them so they'll have good pictures of the roof. Uh, some will even bring uh, a kit to do uh, mold testing if it, if it becomes necessary. So you do want to know what uh, tools they have in their toolbox when, before they come out so that you can make an informed decision as to whether that's the right home inspector for you. None, none of these things on themselves, complete deal breakers. Actually, one of my bank owned homes, we had a big crack in the slab and mm -hmm. I, I got called out, you know, when they, uh, it was when Ario asked the manager was in town and we were walking through the houses and we walked in it and he just said, hey, this feels weird here. And we walked on it. I said, wow, that's something's broken or whatever here. And what we did was some guy wanted to buy the house. And we just, we disclosed, hey, now we know that there's this thing. They said, yeah, we found it. But my guy says it, it's, you know, it was an older home. It was built in the seven, late 60s, early 70s. Mm -hmm. And it actually had a pool in the backyard. The pool was still in pretty good condition. It had any cracks in it or anything. So he just said, you know what? I'll be able to like shave that down or whatever. And but just give me like 7,500 bucks off and I'll just tear. I think it was linoleum or something that was on top of it. They just, they just said, I can make kind of fix this. So it's not that bad. And we just reduced the price and sold the house. Right. So, but you know, obviously if there's a lot of houses on the market, you have choices. Mm -hmm. If it's, you, there's not a lot of houses sometimes and you either have to buy a house maybe that has a couple defects or you just wait. Right. So hopefully this was useful to you or at least interesting. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, leave us comments, tell us your story about something uh, interesting that, that you found in a house and whether or not you purchased it. And we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.